Hello everyone and welcome to week two of um, Indigathon and Believeathon. And just general November trying to beat my Goodreads goal for the year. Um, okay, so my goals for this week, um, which I'm running my weeks from two starting on Tuesday till the following Monday just because that's what works for me because I said so um I want to read four middle grades two graphic novels and two audiobooks this week oh that's so intense <laughs> my goodreads goal today after I marked that I finished I finished this morning and not this morning <laughs> At the very end of the workday today, I finished The Grief Keeper by Alexandra Villasante. Um, it was good. I give it four stars. I felt like the ending was like dragging on. But then you found out so much. Like she lied about like what happened to who, her lied slash omitted and then she had like at the very at the end she had like this the main character had like kind of like a ptsd type of like episode where it she flashed back and it like showed you what actually happened and you were like oh shit so but i really liked it and it ended up being um i think <laughs> you know normal people who like read the blurbs about books um before reading them instead of just like taking recommendations from people like and going into the book blind um probably knew that it was like a lgbt um plus like it's got um a lesbian representation the main character yeah and like a relationship there like yeah so it was good i liked it four stars um when I marked that one as completed on Goodreads, it said that I'm nine books behind. So at least we're down into the single digits now. Um, trying to finish this one tonight. Uh, Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. But it's like 11 o'clock. I'm tired and there's still 60 pages. So... So what we have going on here is um, the main character, um, Salamanca, I believe, is on a road trip to go see her mom with her grandparents, not her mom's parents, her dad's parents. And um, yeah, and so they're kind of taking the long route. It sounds like a very long road trip. I'm not like super familiar with U.S. geography, but... Um, they've, they've had quite a few stops and it's taken them like quite a few days to get to where they're going. They're not there yet. Um, and while she's on this trip, she, it's telling us about the trip, but, it, but also she is telling this story about her friend Phoebe to her grandparents. So it's like kind of two timelines really and yeah it's interesting um they both have similar time uh similar like i can see the similarities of this of the main character's story and the story that she's telling about her friend and so i'm interested in what's happening at the end of both of them but i'm just too tired i can't keep reading so um also i was like on the online like on Overdrive um, slash Libby, my library has that. And I was able to access the group book for Indigathon, The Break by Catherine Vermette. Um, and another one. Oh yeah, Gods of Jade and Shadow. By, I think her name is Sylvia, the author. I can't remember her last name. Um... So I checked because my goal was to read two audiobooks this week. So I finished The Grief Keeper. So that's one. And so I wanted to f f 
read the shorter one, but they're only like 15 minutes difference in length. So I think I'm going to read the group book just because like Gods of Jade and Shadow, I was really excited about, but I don't know anything about the break. So like just knowing myself, like if I put off the one that I don't know about, I might end up not reading it. So I'm going to read that the group book um, starting tomorrow. And yeah, then tomorrow I should definitely finish this. Um, last week I got a lot of reading done, but I literally did nothing except for read because I was so sick. But like today is Tuesday and on Saturday is my youngest daughter's third birthday and we're having a party here at the house. So I have to do things like do all my laundry. I have to clean I have to decorate, I have to make a cake. So there's lots of things that I like have to do this week and I won't be able to just read constantly. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so I'm still hoping that I can make my goal um, because this was the thickest middle grade that I picked up for this week. And so with 60 pages left, I'm for sure finish it tomorrow. Then I got two more skinny ones. And I have a lot of skinny graphic novels that I can read. Ah, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. My God, could you handle if I read 140 books this year? Oh my God. That'd be crazy. Okay, yeah. So this week starting off good. I already finished one book and I'm almost finished an another one. So, yep. Okay. All right. I'm going to bed. Good night. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Oh, the corner is smashed. Oh. That's sad. Oh, no. Oh. oh, that's pretty. Come on, don't close it, don't close it. I'm just gonna un un stretch it out. Oh my god. Don't just un it. unbend don't break it. it. I unbend it. Don't break it, don't break it. That's so pretty. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Those are some really white sheets of paper. Hmm? Like it just looks so white. I guess because it's Compared black to the black back. edges, yeah. Oh, oh my god, it's so pretty. So pretty. Oh my gosh. Hello, people of YouTube. 
Welcome back to another reading vlog. This is, today is, So then I started The Break by Katharina Fermet. And I really enjoyed that. That was really, really intense. Um, and yeah, just like the subject matter was like really, really intense. We basically, we got a lot of points of view. And I was listening to the audiobook through Libby, like my little library. And I thought that the audiobook was very good. Um, there's like trigger warnings for like gang stuff and um, like sexual violence and like bullying, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not, it was, it was really well done. I don't have anything bad to say about it at all. I give it five stars. It was really good. I'm glad that I read it. It, it, uh, yeah. It's not something that I <clears throat> normally go for. And even after reading the blurb, it was like not what I expected. So, but we're in some, we're in a community in Manitoba somewhere, I think. Like, I'm not sure if like this is taking place like in Winnipeg. Or, like, it's, like, close to Winnipeg somewhere. But, like, I feel like I remember Winnipeg being mentioned, like, in the blurb. In the synopsis or whatever that I read. And there's these two young girls. They're, like, 13-ish. Like, she was, like, having eyes at this boy. And then he invited her to come to, like, a party at... I don't know if it was his house at a house anyways and gave them the address and they went to the party and bad things happened to them at the party um, or outside after the party. Um, and so then we got to see like just so many different perspectives, um, like different family members and different people that were connected to it in like some sort of a different way including like the police officers that were involved and uh things like that and it was like a really intense emotional um sad story but also like a really like it was also really interesting and like how everything was interconnected and I really like stuff like that. I really like stories like that. Um So yeah, five stars. That was it was so good. It was very riveting. I highly highly recommend that one. The Break by Katharina Vermette. I'll put the picture there. Um yeah, so I finished that one tonight. That one I was like reading while I was at work, but today was like a transition day at work, like where I like finished a project, then I did like a small one, and then I started a new one. So it was like a lot of like I couldn't, it was like I was not just like putting my head down and working a straight through something all day. So I wasn't really able to listen to a lot at work, but then I like popped it on on my phone on the drive home and I was just like doing laundry and cleaning the basement and I just had it on and then when I was done all that stuff there was only like an hour or maybe an hour and a half left and I'm listening at 1.5 speed so it's like not it wasn't actually like that much and um I recently Someone posted something on Twitter, maybe, or I watched on, and they were posting and saying, like, these are the games that I play, like, while I listen to audiobooks, and, like, I thought that was interesting, like, I never do that if I ever have time to, like, sit down and read a book, like, I'm reading a physical book, I would never, like, um, 
just think to like just sit down and turn an audiobook on and be like doing something else mindless like playing a game or something but I really wanted to like finish that book so I tried it and yeah I was just like playing the games that I play on my phone and I was listening to the book while I I played the game played games for a bit then I like you know made myself something came up made myself something to eat for supper and then kept like played a different game like while I was finishing the book and yeah that was definitely like an interesting experience um, I enjoyed it and it, I, it was really relaxing and I was totally able to concentrate while I played stupid games on my phone. So, <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So the next book I finished was, um, Walk Two Moons by Sharon Creech. And this was a good, cute story. So I think I told already about this. So we have two timelines we have, we're on a road trip with grandma and grandpa to go see our mom. And then we have telling a story about like something that happened with our friend Phoebe's mom, which is like in the past. And I don't want to give away what happens, but it's not what you think. And it's sad. And I wasn't expecting it. And I was actually kind of mad about it. And I was like, what the heck? Like, this is a children's book. This is not how things are supposed to happen. And I actually had the thought in my head. Like, I want to throw this book. Like, that made me upset. Like, that that's what happened. And so that's just what I want to say. I'm mad about that. Like, these are children's books. <sighs> I'm not, it's not okay. So I finished that and I gave it five stars and I threw it across the room. Okay, then I just, and I mean five minutes ago, finished this one. And The Breadwinner by Deborah Ellis. It's a movie, a cartoon now. I believe this is considered like a modern classic. Like a, it's everywhere and like lots of people have read it. Um, and it's about a little girl in Afghanistan. Her family's living in Kabul in Afghanistan. And her dad gets arrested for basically no reason. And anyways, other than him, the only boy in their family is like two years old. So Parvana cuts off all her hair and they dress her up in her, like, her brother's clothes. Um, she had an older brother who's passed away and dressed him up in those clothes, dressed her up in those clothes. And she went out and basically pretended to be a boy in the market to earn money. And it was a good and interesting story. I enjoy reading, like, stories about different cultures and stuff. This is why I enjoyed actually both of these, like Walk Two Moons and The Breadwinner. Um, like super eye-opening to like how people were living in Afghanistan during like the difficult time when the Taliban was in, in power. Um, the only thing I will say about this was this was kind of like a non-ending like the story is definitely not over and there's it <clears throat> excuse me it's a <clears throat> it's a trilogy and then there's like another so there's so there's no is there is there is there five? Oh well that one doesn't okay there's yeah it's a trilogy and then there's an extra book about one of her friends was also doing the same thing. And the, there's another whole book about what happened to her friend after this book ended. So now I need to read the other two books because like, yeah, where this book ended, I was like, mm, it feels like not an ending, but okay. <laughs> and at like a hundred and 
41 pages. Like you could have tacked them together probably <laughs> and just had it be one book. But I guess with children's novels, you want them to be shorter. But still really good. Maybe I'll just give it... I think I already gave it five stars on Goodreads, but it's probably 4.5 because I'm mad that it's a not not really an ending. I just really was like, oh, okay, I guess we're ending it there. <laughs> um, I am running out of space on my phone. But that's the end of what I was going to say. Um, so I'm, anyways, I'm just doing laundry and I think I've run everything through all the machines and now I just have a whole bunch of folding. So, yeah, but I am, I just, so I've just finished three books in a row that were actually kind of heavy, especially for Believeathon. Like, these are children's books. I guess I picked the wrong ones. <laughs> so I want to read something lighter. So I think the next book that I have is um, Steph Soto Ta Taco Queen. That one's on my bedside table right now. So I will definitely start that after I fold all the laundry and everything tonight. And then I have two very skinny graphic novels. I think one of them's Saga. And the other one's maybe called Heart in a Box. And I'm going to read those. And then tomorrow at work, I am going to start the audiobook for Gods of Jade and Shadow. Which I believe is like a Mexican indigenous story to do with the death god. Don't quote me on that. I could just be confusing it with something else, but I feel like that's what it is. But anyways, it's a book that I've been really excited to read. And I was really, really happy to see that I could access it on Libby through my library. So that's what we're going to be working on for tomorrow. And... I will come back and talk to you tomorrow about what I read tomorrow. Okay, have a good night. Well, Luna, are you excited about your cake? It's really pretty, hey? I Oops, it was just an accident. Oh, she licked it. <laughs> Taking a video. Can you send it to Auntie Nikki because she forgot? She didn't forget. She works today. Well, does it look good? No, I need some more green ones. And I need some more. Okay, be careful. And I need some help to put it on. Here, why don't we do it like this this time? Here. Pour some in the lid. Then you can take them out of the lid. There. I'm going to go just blast them from there. Luna, how old are you today? No, use your other finger. Luna! <laughs> Luna. Okay, it's okay, Oz. Luna, how old are you today? I'm Okay. I don't want to be. Luna, how old are you today? I'm a Luna, how old are you today? She's still two and yeah. said tomorrow she'll be three. No, today's her birthday. Yeah, but the last time it was my birthday, it was the next time. Yeah, because your oh, birthday was okay. the next day. All right. It is November 16th at 9 p.m. And I honestly haven't done much reading. But I wanted to update you because I did, like, a lot of stuff has happened even though I haven't been reading too much. I'll talk about the thing that I read first, actually. So, okay, so on Friday at work, I started Gods of Jade and Shadow. I am already loving it. This feels like a five star, and I think I'm only like 30% in. Um, so basically the premise was that there's um, this girl. She opens up. She opens up this chest where a Mayan death god had been trapped. And then he's like, 
Okay, so it was his bones in the chest. And she touched the bones, and then the bones, like, put themselves together. And he turned into, like, a human. Or, well, he looks like a human. Anyways, um, but he's, like, missing... He's missing, like, one ear. I don't know, like a, like, a toe or a finger. Like, he's missing, like, four small, like, body parts. And he told her this, and he's like, so you need to come with me while I go gather these body parts. And she was basically just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's so funny, like, <coughs> <coughs> so it's, it's, like, fantasy, like, mythological-ish, like, fantasy, but also historical fiction because it takes place in, like, 1927, and it's not YA, it's an adult book, and it's good, it's good. Like, the girl, Cassiopeia is her name, she has a lot of attitude, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> Like, in that time, you know, like, women didn't, you know, they just did what they were told, and she's kind of tired of that life, and so even though she's, like, traveling around with it, and he's literally a god, she basically tells him where he can shove it <laughs> on a regular basis, and it's funny, and I really am liking it um, so much, so much. Like, every Indigathon read that I have picked so far has been gold. So not disappointed with my decision to do this readathon. Okay, and then, um, so after work on Friday, I had to do a little bit of running around. <laughs> That's actually funny. So I wanted to go to like the dollar store to look at, like, it's my, it, today is my daughter's third birthday and we had a birthday party at the house today. There's a bunch of kids coming. So I wanted to find something from the dollar store maybe I could give to them. Um, like little goodie bags or like something. And I had a few other things that I had to pick up. And then I also needed to get like juice boxes or whatever for the party. I had everything else. And I was like... It's kind of like a dilemma for me sometimes, especially like right after work of like where I'm going to go. Like if I have to go running errands because the place that's like logically closest to my house is like so busy and it's just like dumb trying to find a parking spot. Um, so <laughs> I remembered that there's a dollar store literally right beside Chapters, which is my local Canadian bookstore. <laughs> so where did I go first, you ask? <laughs> Clearly the bookstore where I don't need anything. Um, Wandering around there for half an hour and I was like, oh my God. And I just wanted, it. today was payday and I just wanted to spend money on myself a little bit. So I was like, okay, I'm going to spend like $50 max what am I going to buy? And I just walked, I walked all around the YA. I walked all around like the adult fiction, like, and I couldn't, I couldn't decide. And I'd been there for like over half an hour and I was like, okay, I'm just going to post on Twitter and I'll, I can put it here. But I like tweeted out a poll asking if I should buy something new or if I should buy like a favorite that I read, but I don't own. And then I kept like waiting like for people to like some people to vote and it was looking like people voted for a fave that you don't own. And then I just completely ignored that. And I bought, here's a mini haul. I bought four <laughs> mass market paperbacks of like Christmas romances. Okay, so I think I'm going to do this like in a, like a specific video. I'm going to do like reading Christmas romances at Christmas. So that's what I think I'm going to do in December. So I bought Christmas in Winter Valley by Jodie Thomas. And that's kind of cute on the front. So 
it looks like this is following this is in part of a like at the bottom here it says a ransom canyon romance so like a lot of romance writers write books and they follow like the, the same characters or they follow like a group of characters and so like if there's like a group of like 10 like friends then like one character or one book will follow these two friends and then the next book will follow two different friends and like you don't need to like read them in the right order or anything so I think that's what's happening here like there are two brothers Cooper and Elliot and so um there's like a little blurb on the back about Cooper and what he's up to and then about Elliot and what he's up to and it's and so yeah Lori Wilde, The Christmas Dare. Okay. Okay, so this one is about a girl who gets... It sounds like she gets left at the altar. And her best friend talks her into going on her honeymoon. Like, anyways. Like, them instead of just her. And so... Um, she runs into Noah McGregor who is an NBA player. And it sounds like they knew each other when they were in high school. So there's that one. Then Debbie Mason, Christmas in Harmony Harbor. And this one. Saving her year. Okay, yeah, so this one, the female owns, like, a small little, like, store, a holiday shop, and the guy is a real estate developer, and he is trying to, he wants to buy that property, and um, she's trying to convince him not to, and she... Okay, it sounds like there is an angel tree in her shop where people put, like, cr like Christmas wishes and they hang them on the tree. And so she challenges him if he can make their wishes come tr Three wishes come true. Then she'll sell him the property and... So it says, how hard can it be to fulfill three wishes from the angel tree? He's certain he'll win and the property will be his by Christmas Eve. Yet bringing joy to others also brings back the biggest disappointments in Kane's own holiday past and challenges him to forgive and forget in order to enjoy the present festivities. But just as he dares to dream that Evie could be his Christmas future, a secret from his childhood threatens their merry ever after. Shit, eh? Then I grabbed a Nora Roberts. This one's called First Snow. Nora Roberts. And then this is following two different. So you have a, a girl called Pandora and her uncle passed away. And so she went to go because she's a beneficiary of his win will. And then she snowed in with the other beneficiary of his will some guy named michael so there's that and then hester is a single mom she doesn't have time for romance but when her neighbor offers to watch her son in the afternoons that's just what she gets <laughs> okay so those are the ones i bought so why didn't i vlog you ask when I was in a bookstore during a time when I'm vlogging? Well, it is because I had not edited, exported, and uploaded last week's vlog, and my camera was full, so I could not. <laughs> I apologize. I would have. Um, yeah, so there was that mini haul. Came home, picked up my kids, um put them to bed and then like cleaned like crazy and like did like getting ready for the party 
Then this morning was the same thing. We were getting ready for the party, blowing up balloons. There are balloons everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Decorations. Decorations everywhere. The place is a mess. Um, before this, you should have seen, I probably did like a little, I made a little video of um, my girls like decorating the cake after I iced it. <clears throat> yep, and then her birthday party was from like 1 to 4. And I missed like the my Patreon live stream. I'm a Patreon of Rachel Marie's and they were having a live stream. Like the time and day kept changing cuz Rachel was sick and like a bunch of other stuff whatever. But it was, they finally decided, and it was at 3 o'clock my time, and I just, like, obviously, it was, like, in the middle of the party, so <clears throat> I'm really disappointed that I missed that, but actually, after I'm done filming this, I think I'm gonna go and watch it. I don't know, it's, like, an hour, but I want to watch it because I want to, so I think I'm gonna do that, and yeah, I, I haven't read anything, I... Um, after the party, we ate, we, I tried to clean up as much as I could so far, um, put my kids to bed, and then I, like, my last week's vlog still isn't posted, and it's Saturday. Like, I should have posted it on Friday, but I didn't even get it, <coughs> I didn't even get it edited and stuff until Friday night. So tonight, before I'm filming this, I already, I made like the, th I made, I made the thumbnail. I didn't realize you could have Canva like on your phone. I always use it on the computer, but so I downloaded Canva and I would use it and I made the thumbnail and like did all the little like end cards and everything or whatever. Um, and then now it's gonna, it's gonna upload, it's gonna go live tomorrow morning at like 9 a.m. And then this week's vlog, what I'm filming right now, like, I'm going to get it. It's going to... I wanted it to be up, like, if I'm ending the vlog on Monday, I should be able to post it on, like, Wednesday. Like, vlogs don't take a lot of editing. But it's just my life is just very busy. <laughs> so. Um, I'm going to try that to get it up on Wednesday. And then maybe I could actually have like some regular content on Friday. I already have something filmed. I have one video pre-filmed. Or maybe I'll just vlog for this month, then do a wrap up and then I don't know what I'm doing in December. My whole like video schedule basically like went out the window. I had all these ideas and then life just got in the way. So I decided I was gonna vlog November so maybe I'll just post my vlogs. I don't know. <clears throat> so I feel like with all this vlogging and like how much I'm talking about the books, like do I really need to do a wrap up where I talk about them all again? I'm thinking for my wrap up, what I might do instead is like, I'm gonna take like all the middle grades and like rank them like from like best to worst. And just, like, talk about them a little bit and not talk about, like, not summarize the plot, like, and just so that I don't have, like, an 85-minute video. And because, yeah, because basically I had my Indigathon reads. I have my Indigathon reads. I have my the mangas and graphic novels. And then I have the middle grades. So I could basically rank all three, like, different categories of those. And then it would be, like, maybe, like, kind of a bit of a different wrap-up. I think I might do that because I'm tired of like the traditional wrap up and just talking for like 85 minutes. So, um, anyways, yeah, that's all I have for now. I think I'm going to watch that live stream and then maybe read a little bit more. I'm still working on Steph Soto Taco Queen. I think I'm on chapter like six or seven of it. Um, and we haven't really got to, like, a problem, the problem yet, like, the main conflict or whatever, so, yeah. Okay, that's my life. <laughs> Bye. Now. Hi, everyone. I am 
Banteria. Show them uh, this whole costume. Whole costume, I'm the whole costume. Is it not getting in? <laughs> this is the whole costume. Oh, did we pause it? Stopped. Why did it stop? Uh, Mom. Whole costume, guys, so. Careful to Mom. laugh this little. Mom. Mom. What? You choked. You choked? I'm the best princess ever. Ooh. Um, I just said, ooh, I'm the best princess. Don't you worry, my tree. Oh, I did not look like I can say. What can I? Oh, now I can see. I just see. my new dog came on. Okay, Hello, I'm, I'm Oceana. I'm We're going to walk Whoa. Okay, are you done? No. Did you sink? Hurry up. Why? Because. Bedtime? Pretty quick. And. Okay, say goodbye to the video. No. Yeah. Say I'm witch. Ooh, I'm witch. Say goodbye to the video. No. Say goodbye to the video. No, um, we're not going. No! Oh, Sienna, yeah. Take the dinner. After. Hey, it is, um, Monday evening. And, um, I am exhausted. I was trying to read as much as I could just now, and I am just falling asleep. <laughs> so, I need to wrap up this vlog. So because it's Monday and that's when I'm ending the vlogs. So yesterday, Sunday, I actually had like way more time to read than I thought and I finished Steph Soto Taco Queen, which ended up being like super cute. I really liked it. I think I gave it like four stars. Very cute, like more of what I expected from like middle grade books than like the kind of heavier themes of other ones that I read this week. Um, editing Kylie here. Um, just uh, watching this back and realizing that I didn't really at any point tell you what Steph Soto Talking Queen was about. Um, I maybe did in like last week's vlog when I talked about what I was going to read this week, but I, I didn't actually like say anything about the plot at all. So I'm just going to quickly tell you um, Steph, her dad, it was like his dream to like own a restaurant. So he saved up a lot of money and then he had the opportunity to buy this taco truck. So, um, he's been running this taco truck for like a long time. And, um, then basically the city is threatening to change the reg regulations around food trucks and, um, make things like a lot more difficult for them like some kind of ridiculous ones were like that they would have to move the truck every hour which like and then and that they would have to park like within a hundred meters of a public restroom and like things like that and um so yeah she, she kind of had to like work um help her dad out a little bit um because he's not super confident with his English and things like that. And then there was a secondary storyline where like her art class at school, which she really loves art and is interested in art, um, is was running out of supplies and they don't have any more money. And so the art class had to work together to like create a fundraiser and she helped with that. And yeah, like it was a really cute story. Um, I loved the friendships in it. Um, I loved like the family aspect. The um, parents of Steph are very super overprotective immigrant parents. And I love the vulnerability of the dad. Like this is like a grown adult male who regularly asks his, like I'm not sure what grade she was in. I don't remember. I want to say... She, like, it's middle school. Like, these are middle grade books, so she, middle school is, like, grade 7, 8, 9. So I think she's, like, kind of in the middle of that. Some, maybe she's in grade 8, so, like, 13 years old. So you have a grown man 
who like regularly throughout the book would ask the 13 year old to um read something for him translate it for him so that he knew that he was understanding it properly because he was so like self-conscious of his english and just like for any man to make himself vulnerable like that especially to a child or like your own child like that's not something you see very often and i like it was really refreshing um and this was also the case of a book where I felt that, that the, the character, like the middle grade character, really acted like they were a middle grade. Like, I would say throughout almost the whole book, like all this stuff was going on with like her dad and the truck. And she was just kind of there, like as the dad would get information, as he would ask her to read these bulletins that were posted and she didn't seem to get it like the dad was like obviously like upset by everything that was happening and and she didn't even really seem to understand like the gravity of all of it until like the very end and then she kind of had like an oh shit moment where she was like oh god like I need to I need to help like I want to help and And so, like, I really felt like that was um, super realistic, like, because especially preteens or just, like, very young teenagers, they're usually super self-centered and um, don't necessarily, like, key into, like, the things that are happening with the people that are around them. And they are just, like, you know, like, horse blinders on and concerned with, like, the things that they are consumed about in their own world. Um, And so, like, that made sense. Like, she was there with him, and she had heard all these notices, and she read them for him, but she didn't really seem to, like, get it that this was serious, like, and it was seriously going to affect, like, their family's livelihood. And, yeah, so that was... Yeah, I really... Yeah, I really liked it. It was a cute book, and I really liked... Yeah, like, she has two really close friends... And then there was this other character, Julia, who was kind of like an, like an, it was like an enemies to friends. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no, it was super good. And yeah, just rambled on for five minutes, but the book was good and it deserved me talking about it, which I didn't do. So I want to insert this clip. Okay. Back to the regular scheduled programming. Then I started... I'll show you a boy called Christmas, which, um, this is meant to be, um, at the beginning it says that it's the story of like how Santa Claus or like Father Christmas came to be. And I am like 60 pages in, which is about a quarter of the way in. And yeah, um, so far it's kind of um, sad. So like his mom, the kid's mom passed away and the, him and the dad are really poor and the dad gets given basically an opportunity to, well, I guess the king of Finland where they live, um, has offered a 12,000, whatever the currency is, reward to anyone who can prove that the that the land like Elfheim or something like where elves live like in the far north is real so there's a group of guys that bas- that invited his dad to go with them and he left him behind but the dad like didn't come back and so now the kid is gone looking for him um Yeah, so, so far it's just kind of sad, and it's kind of an adventure story, so we'll see what happens. Um, the only thing that kind of threw me off was that, um, at, like, a lot of times in the book, it's referring to, like, the father by his actual first name. Like, in the scene, or different scenes that I read, um, it's just, like, the son and the father, 
<laughs> and instead of just calling him dad or, you know, whatever, um, there, it's using his actual first name, Joel, which is, I found it really weird. <laughs> I was like, okay, why? If he's the dad, just call him the dad. Like, but I don't know. Anyways, um, okay, so that was what I read yesterday. And then today I continued on with my audiobook at work, Gods of Jade and Shadow. Still really, really liking that one. But I still have four hours left on that audiobook. So hopefully I'll finish it tomorrow. And I'll let you know my final thoughts on that um, in next week's vlog. Then tonight I picked up a graphic novel. This is called heart in a box and I really liked it I man what do I want to give it it's at least a four star but I'm like debating five star like I really like the art style I really loved the kit the main character and the story was good and I believe it's a. Uh... I mean the way it ended like there could be more story but it also had like a good enough ending that it could be a standalone. Um, but basically what's happened is at the beginning she's suffered like an, a real heartbreak and it's thrown her into like a depression. Sorry, my hand is like cramping here. And um, she basically just out loud like wishes that she didn't have a heart. And then some guy just like pop appears and is like okay like if you're serious we can do that and so she wishes her heart away but then obviously like it takes like only very little time for her to realize that without a heart not only does she not feel the bad shit that she was feeling but she doesn't feel anything any good shit so she wants her heart back and so she the guy had gave her a card so she phoned him and she wants her heart back but her heart's in like a bunch of different pieces so basically you're just following her on her adventure to gather all the pieces of her heart so she can have her heart back and yeah it's so good like it was really good I liked it a lot a lot like maybe five stars a lot like it was very good and I thought I could maybe read this whole one too, but I'm just literally, <sighs> literally just falling asleep like while I'm trying to read it. So I read the first chapter of Saga. Okay, so in Saga, so far, it looks like there are two planets or no, like one planet, one's a planet, one's a moon. And the people are basically, like, fighting. Like, it's an eternal war, like, forever and ever. And so he's from one planet, and she's from another planet. And they run away together and fell in love. And we have a baby. So, people are, like, after them from both sides, trying to get them. I don't really understand why it's such a big deal but apparently it is but anyways I read the first chapter it's so short like it probably wouldn't even take me I think it only took me like 45 minutes to read this one so like it'd be the same like I only need probably like a half an hour to get through it but like I'm just so tired <laughs> okay so this week I read three middle grade I read The Breadwinner, um, Walk to Moons, and Steph Soto Taco Queen. I read two audiobooks for Indigathon. I finished The Grief Keeper by Alessandra V. San v I read The Grief Keeper. <laughs> and I read The Break by Katharina Vermet. And then I read one graphic novel, Heart in a Box, by 
Kelly Thompson and Meredith McLaren. Okay, so I was um, too short on my goal. I wanted to read two graphic novels and four middle grades. So, um, but I had a lot on my plate with my daughter's birthday party and stuff. So this coming week, my goal is probably going to be pretty similar, but I'll talk about that, what I want to read. I'll decide what I want to read tomorrow and then put that in the opening of the next blog. But I think I still have um, seven or eight middle grades like out there on my shelf and I have five graphic novels for sure that are out like in my living room on the bookshelf. But they are like thick ones. Like some of them are very like they're it's not gonna be like a forty five minute read. So and yeah, then I still have at least two more Indigathon audiobooks after this. Um, maybe more. So yeah, but I mean it's still a really good week. I finished six books, so still killing my Goodreads goal. I think um, after I enter this one, my Goodreads goal will say that I'm only six books behind schedule, like to finish 140 books by the end of the year. So I'm still catching up. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> okay, so... I hope everyone had a good week. I hope everyone else is reading awesome books. But that's all I have for this vlog. Good night.